Okay guys, today I am out doing parks on the air. I'm doing a poda here today. It is the middle of winter here in Australia, so it's been a little bit cold lately and I haven't really felt like getting out and operating portable. Now, in addition, we've had some pretty poor solar conditions lately. When I say pretty poor, it's been absolutely smashing the earth, wiping out HF. You probably noticed it yourself. So what I've got here today is I've got my 7610. I sold my 7300. I've got my 705, but my 705 will only do 10 watts, so I need the extra power out of this. So I've got it out of the shack and we're ready to go with that. I've got my power supply sitting over here. I've got my laptop for logging and also my phone here as well for my internet access for being able to spot myself on the POTA website. Now, the only thing that I'm missing from all of this is some juice. I need to be able to plug in my power supplies to something and that's where today we're going to be testing out this bad boy, the Anker Solix C1000 portable power station. Now I've reviewed a couple of these portable power stations before on the channel and the main thing that a lot of people ask in the comments is, is it RF quiet? Because you don't want to be ruining your reception by uh, RF noise or RFI coming out of these devices. So we're going to test that today. That's why I'm out here in this lovely remote location. It's absolutely perfectly quiet out here uh, and I've operated for this. This is where you want to go when you've got man-made noise. Uh, I've been having heaps of KRM at home as well recently. Someone's turned on something or got some bad switch mode power supply or something down the street. So I operate here portable um, and perfectly it's a pod, it's a pod operation as well. So you get the manual um, which is actually a QR code. So this is not the actual manual. This is just um, all of the safety instructions and stuff there. So you can scan the QR code there on the screen at the moment if you want to bring up the manual. Um, these come with a five year warranty as well. So um, you can register your warranty online. Now, some of the accessories that you get is you get this hefty power cord for charging. I've already charged mine up for the demo today. You get a couple of these leads as well. Now, I can't remember what those plugs are. I'm going to have to look at them and put an overlay on the screen to tell you what those plugs are. I've forgotten what it is. is it PD something? I can't remember. Power delivery? No, that's not right. A cigarette lighter plug for charging and we've also got a, a dual one here for your solar panels so you can also buy adapters as well so these can go off to like MC4 connectors and other connectors that you'd find on solar panels so uh, it comes with those two leads you might need an extra couple of leads if you want to be doing solar charging which we're not going to be doing today but this is the unit itself it's a lot smaller than some of the other units um, not as heavy as some of the other units as well so this is going to be quite interesting to see how this goes now this is a thousand and fifty six watt hour battery and it can do eighteen hundred watts of power out the front um, AC adapt uh, AC outputs out there at the front you've also got here on the side the ability to connect into extra batteries or uh, there on the side so you've got that option as well um, on the other side you've got your charging inputs so you've got your IEC lead you've got uh, your breaker and then you've also got your DC inputs there for your solar panels and your charging from your uh, from your solar panels from your car as well using that plug that I've lost what it actually is called I can't remember but anyway I'm sure that you guys get the idea your outputs here on the front, you've got your cigarette lighter, which is a DC output. Again, one of these, one of the bugbears that I have with these things is that they don't have an Anderson power pole connector so that you can connect directly to the battery and you connect uh, directly to your radio for extra power output because there's only like 10 amps out of this. So that's not going to be enough to run my 7610 at full power, which we need to today because of the bad conditions. You've got your USB, so that's going to power my phone. You've got and you've got your AC outputs, which I'm going to power my power supply and my laptop off. You've also got a nifty little light here at the top as well, um, which you can turn on once this boots up. There we go, 100%. You've got very varying different light levels. So if you're low light or something, you can turn those on too. You can also control this off of the app on your phone. You do get the option to be able to connect. Oh, did it connect? No, it did. It must have connected over Bluetooth. So there we go, we've got 100% state of charge and I can turn on my AC output. I can turn, I heard it click then, I can turn off my AC output. Um, so you've got the ability to control all of that over the app with Bluetooth. 
Now this is perfect for off-grid situations and also for emergency purposes as well. So if the power goes off, then you can switch directly over to this. It comes with a UPS function built in. So what you can do is, is you can plug in the power here into the side of the unit and you can have your appliances running, your critical appliances running here off the front. If it loses power, it'll automatically switch over in its UPS mode to the battery in here. So you'll have seamless power, the power might go off, you won't even notice because it will switch directly onto the battery of this. When the power comes back up, then it's fed back through the grid again. So in that regard for a UPS solution for your critical stuff in an emergency as well, when the power goes out, this is where this really shines. So I'm gonna go for broke here. I've got my power supply plugged in, I've got my laptop charger plugged in, and I've also got my phone plugged in because I want everything turned on. So we're gonna crank basically everything on, turn on, and fire up. We are drawing 59, 50, 61 watts, 60 odd watts. I think you could just see it there. We can uh, bring that up, I think, also on the app. So we're drawing, yeah, AC output at the moment is 54 watts, 10 watts on the USB. So, and it gives you a nice little graph, which is pretty cool. So you can have a look at that, okay. Well, I can already see stations. There we go, it's quite a strong station there on 20. Let's have a look on 40. Interesting, I'm not sure what that is. I wonder if that's interference. But I can hear a station here on uh, 40. Everything else is really quiet at the moment. The noise levels, as you can see there, less than S1. That there, let's see what that is. Let's see if that's a legit signal. If I disconnect the USB, no. No, it doesn't go away. I can't disconnect my power supply because that, oh, it changed a little bit, maybe. But that's only on sort of one frequency. Let's go on 10. Ah, there we go. So it's there on 10 as well. So I reckon that's coming out of this, uh, out of this unit. The good news is it's not wide band, so that's good. 15's a little bit noisy though. S5, 17 meters, S7, 20 meters is nice and quiet though. Or well, S2 to S3, when I say quiet, it's not terribly noisy. 30 meters S2, 40 meters about S2. 80 meters is, well I don't have an 80 meter antenna, but that's quite, quite noisy. All right, let's see if we can activate some POTA here. Now I just wanted to take this opportunity quickly here at home, I've just set up the radio back and I am running off the C1000. And I just want to show you the difference from what I saw in the field earlier on today uh, at this point in the video. So on 10 meters, you could see there that it's reasonably quiet. I've still got that birdie sitting up at the higher end of the band. But what is different though, is if I go to 12 meters, it's definitely not as noisy as I saw when I was portable. Now, I, I don't really operate 12 meters from the location that I was at. So perhaps there is some local noise. There is a tower, um, a radio tower that doesn't have a lot on it, but it is reasonably close. So maybe that had some sort of interference or something, but you could see there, I've got less than an S1 noise figure here at home. On 15 meters, you could see there that Pretty much that's sort of stock standard, looks normal. It's S1 or less than S1 sitting here. 17 meters is the same, pretty quiet across the whole band. Uh, 20 meters is reasonably noisy here, but as you saw when I was out in the field, it was pretty uh, quiet. Uh, that's uh, 30 meters, which is about, about right, about what it is here. And then there's that birdie on 40 meters. So that's pretty much the only real distinctive thing that I could tell about this unit is that interference is on seven or one, four, six on lower sideband. If you go off of that, it's about my regular noise uh, figure here on 40 meters. Um, I don't have my antenna up for 80, so I can't test that. All right, so I'm just gonna spot here on the POTA website now and we'll then start calling CQ. Got a visitor here. 
What are you doing? He obviously wants to call CQ too. As it would happen, it starts raining just as I'm about to start activating. Let's just have a look at the radar for a minute and just check. It's, this is the thing that I was saying, it's been terrible weather and I pick a day where it's supposed to be quite nice and it's still dropping water out of the sky. Raining on my 7610. Just can't win, can you? Look at that. It's just starting to come across. Oh, well, let's get activating quickly. CQ Poto, Victor Kilo 7, Hotel Hotel. VK3 Alpha Papa Juliet. VK3 Alpha Papa Juliet, 5-9. Yeah, Aiden. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure if you gave me a sooner report. It's a bit hard to hear this end. Uh, I'll give you a 4 and 6 back to you. Yeah, QSL, thanks for the four and four and six. Yeah, uh, quite a signal discrepancy there. I'm hearing you quite uh, quite well. So, uh, but I am uh, I am in a uh, fairly remote location that's uh, got no uh, got no noise. Uh, sorry, what was the name over? Yeah, name here is Andrew, uh, located in Horsham, Western Victoria. Yeah, home station. So yeah, noise falls up a little bit. So a bit hard to hear. All right, all the best and uh, good luck. Seventy three. 73, thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, QRZ, VK7HH. Uh, VK7, Mike Alpha Tango. Uh, VK7, Mike Alpha Tango. G'day, Matt. Uh, you are a 5x1, 51, over. I've been hoping, hoping it was all mate. QSL's a 5x1, I've got you 5x9, So peaking around about 133 watts at the moment. Um, when I transmit, I'll just... Uh, put out another call and show you there. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, Victor Kilo 7, Hotel Hotel. Victor Kilo 7, Hotel Hotel. Calling and listening. Uh, VK3 Sierra Quebec. Uh, VK3 Sierra Quebec, I think it was. You are a 5 by 7, 57 QSL. Yeah, QSL, uh, I'm good to work, Jim. Last day we were 5 and 6, 56, over. Wipe the drive. Jeff, over. Yeah, QSL there, Jeff. Thanks very much for the uh, for the call. I'm wiping the water off. I've got my uh, radio out here and just wiping the water off of it as it starts to rain. I hope uh, hope the shower uh, doesn't continue. Uh, but good to get you in the log, over. Yeah, QSL, good on you. Take care. 73, and thanks for being there. Roger, Roger. 73, QRZ, VK7HH. Well, VK1 Alpha Oscar. Well, thanks for that. Appreciate you coming up and giving me a call. Uh, got a bit of a pile up, so I'll continue on over. Roger, mate. Good to hear you out. Ah, there's water I'm everywhere. And, um, yeah, and I just started my own YouTube channel as well. It's called Ham Radio Down Under, so have a look at that. Yeah, QSL, Andrew. I'll uh, give it a look. Thanks for that. 73. Well, that was a very quick flurry of contacts. 14 contacts already activated the park already. To see if we can get a couple more. Um, the shower has stopped, so that's a good sign. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, CQ Poda, Victor Kilo 7, Hotel Hotel. Victor Kilo 7, Hotel Hotel, Victor Kilo 3, India Delta Kilo, VK3 IDK. Yeah, VK3 IDK, uh, good afternoon, 5 and 8, 58 QSL. QSL, I have you as a 5 and 5, and um, yep. Victor Kilo 4, Mike Charlie Whiskey. Victor Kilo 4, Mike Charlie Whiskey. I didn't, wasn't looking at the signal meter, so I might give you a report on the next over. Go ahead. Uh, Victor Kilo 4, Mike Charlie Whiskey, you are a 5-9. Five 5-9 nine. Five nine into Victoria, Australia. Uh, QSL, thank you for the 5 by 9 You threw me with the VK4 call sign. <laughs> so, uh, good signal. 5 by uh, 7 into Tassie, over. Uh, but I love your content, mate. Uh, keep it up. Um, 73. Yeah, QSL. Sorry, what was the name over? Uh, the name here was Matt. Uh, Mike Alpha X-ray. Mike Alpha X-ray. Matt. Well, I'm having a typical Tasmanian weather day. We just had a very slight shower come through, and I was a bit worried that I have to pack up. But now the sun's out, so typical uh, typical Tassie weather. 73 there, Lee. Thank you very much. Uh, QRZ VK7HH. Uh, VK3 Alpha Charlie Zulu. VK3 Alpha Charlie Zulu, g'day Peter, 5 by 9, 59 over. Oh, 
So 5 and 9 into Melbourne, Hayden, sounding really good. And uh, that's Melbourne weather you were describing. Hi, hi. Thanks for the activation. 7-3, Hayden. Yeah, Melbourne, Victor, Melbourne, Hobart, you know, they're sort of both the same, over. Roger, roger. <laughs> uh, but we, we grin and bear it. Cheers, Hayden. That's right, it's getting a bit chillier now, so um, it's, uh, yeah, the, the breeze has just sort of picked up as well. But no, all good, thank you very much for the contact. Uh, 73. 73, hey. All right, so uh, that was a successful activation. We've managed to get, was that 18, 18 contacts. All that time I was operating and we're only down to 97%. I was drawing about, it's drawing about 70 watts here at the moment. It's still charging the laptop, still charging the phone, um, and obviously running the radio as well. It was peaking at about yeah, about 130 watts when transmitting. I've only used um, 3%, 3%. So this thing will last you all day for a POTA activation. Now, obviously, there was those little issues which were still um, present here on 40 meters. You can see that there's that little birdie, if I can get it to focus, there's that little birdie just up in frequency, which if I'm sitting right on it, it's five by nine. If I'm off it, I could still kind of hear it, but it's still, it didn't really impair me too much when I was operating, at least on 40 meters. On 20 meters here, I could see heaps of signals up and down the band. Bearing in mind, I've got the Anchor Solix C1000 sitting there and the antenna is like literally just sitting right behind it. It's like probably like two meters away, three meters away. So that will probably uh, be better if this was a little bit further away or the antenna was a little bit further away. So, um, but that's powered everything that I needed, like 3%, 3% um, and I've managed to make 18 contacts in my about half an hour here of activating. I'm also going to be using this for some of my microwave stuff as well. We had our winter field day yesterday, which I didn't participate in, but I would have used this to power everything because I've got my 40 amp power supply. So rather than having heaps of different batteries um, plugged up to all these radios, I can have just one power supply and run it all off the power station. And then I also get the ability to plug in my laptop. I can plug in my phone and charge everything I need to. I can even make a cup of coffee with a kettle if I really wanted to. Anything that's going to be able to run off this AC side of things. Now, Anchor Solix also have a deal going on at the moment. There is $500 off for their end of financial uh, deal that ends on June the 30th, when uh, this year, June the 30th, 2025. So there's a link below in the description if you want to get one of these um, on that particular deal. Now I mentioned I was going to use this for some of my microwave days. I did a uh, activation for the John Moore Field Day here with all of my uh, microwave radios and pretty much every band that I've got. If you want to watch that video, then you can watch that popping up on the screen right here.